You can take a little, even a little tweezer. You can get it with you smash it. Okay, I'd like to welcome every planning and zoning commission meeting for 2022. We're gonna, if you could rock pledge of allegiance. To the Republic stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excuse me. Okay, we have a new agenda here in front of you. Uh, updated agenda. Any agenda? Um, go right to. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, seating and everything. We're all set. All the no one's here. Okay. Uh, public participation. Is there any public wishing to speak? No one's in the Zoom room. So, if there isn't any public participation, we'll move on to the zone enforcement officer's report. As you can tell, we got in our packet a report. Uh, is there any questions for the zoning enforcement? Any questions from the commissioners on the officer, officer's report? Here, we'll move on to the next thing. Um, I, I, may I have some yes. of those uh, topics that I reviewed in the Casio classes that I did. Do that Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any remarks, commissioners? Okay, we're going to go right to the public hearing, and I'm going to have the procedures for the public hearing. Procedures for public hearings. The order of public hearings shall be as follows. A, convening by chairperson. B, reading of the by the commission secretary or commission commissioner designated by the chairperson to act in their stead. C, presentation by applicant. D, to report on the application. E, person wishing to speak in favor of the application limited to three minutes per person. F, persons wishing to speak in opposition to the application, limited to three minutes per person. G, rebuttal by the applicant, limited to five minutes total. During a public hearing, it should be within the discretion of the chairperson. Time limitations should be varied slightly, provided the commission consents to any by a majority vote. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to move to the first petition, petition 24-22. I'm going to ask um, Vice Chairman Claffey to uh, read that petition, please. A, petition 24-22 special permit, section 5.2.7, to modify stand sign to allow for LED prices at 295 North Main Street, excuse me, 295 Main Street, Kara Kennedy, owner, Five Main Street, Newington LLC. Contact Kara Kennedy. All right, thank you. Is the applicant here or on Zoom? Mr. Chair. Yes. Not see the applicant in the room or in online. Um, in an online presence. And we can come back to. Uh, okay. We, we have to leave that. that. But anyway, so um, if um, Commissioner um, Lenard, if you could read petition B, petition 28 that two into the record, please. Petition 28 2 special permit section 3.23.B, especially outside use to allow intent and firearm sales at 95 and Keystone Novelty Distributors, owner 95 LLC. Con Alex, oh. very much, Commissioner Lenars. Um, just before you come up, you can come up. I just want to. We didn't really do a roll call here, uh, <laughs> so um, um, if you could do a quick roll call. Um, uh, <clears throat> here. Uh, here. Uh, here. here, Commissioner Clappy. Here. Commissioner Haggerty. Here. Commissioner Havens. Here. Commissioner Lenaris. 
Here. Commissioner Trister. Commissioner Trister. Commissioner Woods. Commissioner Woods. Here. Commissioner Braverman. Commissioner Droz. Here. Commissioner Gill. Here. Commissioner Haggerty. Yeah. Mr. Haggerty is online. Is online. Online. Okay. Can you hear me? Very good. Thank you, Noreen. You're welcome. And the applicant is here. You can go right ahead and make a presentation. Yes, my name is uh, Haggerty, and I represent the Chiefs Technologies. Uh, all the paperwork has been submitted. And uh, there's a couple of questions that were asked. Uh, following that was not shown on the submission. Uh, the building permit and final inspection required for the tent. That's okay. You know, the storage unit for the fireworks. I guess they were concerned about that. And it wasn't shown on there. And what we'll be having on both sites, uh, we're going to be having uh, overnight security. That we have a person there that'll see what's going on, if anything. Mm -hmm. uh, all the sites in, in other states that we have, we haven't had really any concerns. But if the committee wants that, that's fine. You know? mm -hmm. uh, parking of the vehicles 20 feet from the tent, that's just common with us. We don't want anything close. You know, some of these hot rods, they get there and, you know, backfire and all that stuff. We don't want that. So we do. It will be enforced. <clears throat> uh, exit signs, that's a must on all our tents, including our, our, our brick and mortar stores. They have to be up. And uh, that is all approved by the fire marshal when he does his inspection. Uh, the, tent, the tents... Uh, some of them are anchored with stakes. Some of them are anchored with gigantic weight things, fill up water any time now. If you ever see a carnival, that's how they do them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the sign requirement, well, actually, ours is a little bit bigger, four inch. Ours, I think ours is six. Uh, we don't want nobody shooting anything off close to 300 feet, you know. And if they do, they're sent away from the property. But like I tell all the commissions that I, I visit, you know, I hate to use the word, but you can't stop stupid. You know, uh, about four or five years, if you remember back down in Georgia at the Walmart, guy went in there uh, where they had the fireworks row, took it and lit it, burnt the place down, you know. But uh, we try to control and we only have so many people in, you know, the, the person in charge keeps an eye on how many people are here and he does watch or she watches what's going on. <laughs> Me, myself, I had a place in Woonsocket. I had a guy come in. He, he kind of hit me wrong, you know, and uh, he took out his lighter and, and, and he was just not clicking it, but like this, you know, opening it. And so I just asked him to leave, you know, and he did, you know, there was no problems. Uh, usually we talk with the police so that when we call, you know, we're not calling for fun. If we call you, we got a problem. So, uh, so that one about the 300 feet, yeah, that sign will be definitely up. There's no question of that. You know? Like I said, all of this is approved by the council, but yet we still have to be approved by the fire marshal himself. He's, he's the last say on everything. You know? <clears throat> and uh, so far, all the fire, fireplaces, fireworks that we had, we haven't been any problems with them. That's about all I have. If you have any questions, questions, we'll go into questions. Um, Mr. Chair, before you go to the questions, the applicant kind of talked about staff comments and addressed those a little bit, but perhaps it would be helpful to establish record and just sort of describe the project itself. So if you don't mind, Eric, going back to the map and just describe the site location. So this is at... Um, 95, 95 Fen Road. Road, the proposed location for the tent site is, as you can see, what Eric is like circling, this white area. There is also proposed location for the temporary bathroom, the portable bathroom area, which is that X uh, shown area on the other side. 
And then the next picture shows the actual tent with the signage that's on it. So this is what those things normally look like. Everybody is pretty familiar with all this stuff, um, as you know. Um, in a way of staff report, as um, actually, the, the, I did say uh, to chair, but the rest of you did, do not know this. We failed to issue the abutters notices on this. So we will be recommending continuation of public hearing on this application because that's necessary. We have to um, keep that since we haven't sent notices in time to abutting property owners. Aside from that, um, with some of these staff questions that were raised, the applicant had responded to them in a letter to us in an email that we received. We will ask that some of these items are actually shown on the plan, like 20 foot diameter around the tent, you know, certain things to be actually shown on this map. But aside from that, the staff comments are pretty much addressed. So technically, we do not have issues. This is a temporary use. Um, it happens for so many days around 4th of July. Um, so as long as the commission is OK, we wouldn't have a big problem with you approving it. Okay. Thank you, Renata. Um, we don't usually require them to have security all night. That that would be the applicant's choice, isn't it? Because usually, I think they put the fireworks in a container, yeah, yeah. shipping container. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that the applicant knows if you yeah. have security, it's totally your choice. Right. Okay. Yeah, I believe that was derived from a question from the fire marshal who just said, "What are you going to store the fireworks in?" Okay. Mm -hmm. And for protection <coughs> overnight in the overnight hours when they answered them. You know, that, so. that's what. Because okay. I, I guess the, the law says you can either or, you know. Correct. I either have a container yeah. or have uh, somebody there at night. Yep. Okay. Very good. Any other questions from the commissioners? And these are all legal fireworks. Yeah. yeah there's no aerials, yeah. none of that stuff. And ho hopefully this isn't going to be a problem that we have to continue this to the next meeting. You'll still have time, correct? To yeah, I, I talked to the, the corporate office. I, you know, it's a little shorter sale, but I think we're going to go through July 10th anyway is what their proposal is. Okay. Right. Yeah. By the time you take the tent down, get the people to, yeah. to schedule them to take the tents down, you know. Okay, very good. Is there any questions from the commissioners? No. So okay, when, when we return at the next meeting, we will have a list of proposed things that we issue as conditions. One of the things that I the, these are you know pretty common in every single town. I uh, my standard condition in other towns where I worked was always that we have to ensure that they leave the site clean after they leave. So one of the That's things, a must. Yeah, one a of must. the conditions is that you know they pick up after themselves, and if they don't, then next year when they come in with an application, we can hold that against them if, if they violate that okay. restriction. So there will be a couple of conditions that we will recommend. And I noticed there's sample signs with the sizes. Does this mean that there's gonna be one of each of these? I think if you look at their tent, you can kind of see, I just brought it up on the yeah. screen. You can kind of see what they're- I understand. I'm just, my question is though, are we gonna see two of each of these signs or are we gonna see only one of each of these signs? What do you mean? Well, sometimes people put them on different, facing different directions and stuff, and we end up duplicate signs. So my question is, we you have a sample of five signs here are uh, with the sizes. You're going to put each of one of each of these. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I and mean, we don't we don't have external signs. They're on the tent, on the ropes. They don't go. You know, we don't put it out. We don't have that guy going like this and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to. I think he's cool, you know, but we don't. You know. So I think the answer to your question is they will have as many signs as they possibly can hang on this tent unless you restrict it. Right. So if you would like me to include some restriction. The, road, the way the roads are, you know, yep, yep. if you have one side with sign, the other side they ain't going to see it. Yeah. Okay. And we have one way in, one uh, two ways out. Yeah, you know. it's a very short duration, so uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think the other commissioners have a problem. So whatever signs you hang on there will be fine. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So this will be voted on next next one. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Yes. And you'll be notified in the head office on it.
it's a I mean, yeah, they'll get invited again to the Zoom meeting and, you know, they'll have you, okay. if they have you come again, then we'll see you again in two weeks. All right. Thank you very much, Ash. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Um, no. Oh, excuse me. By any chance, are you doing a presentation for the other one as well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just have to open it and then you can just uh, kind of. So, um, could I have Commissioner Woods, please, if you could read on to the record uh, C, petition 29 22. 29 22, special permit section. 3.23.1.B and accessory outside use to allow a tent event for fireworks sales at 205 Kelsey Street. Applicant Keystone Novelty Distributors LLC, owner 95 um, Fen Road. That's not right though, is it? Wasn't the first one 95 Fen Road? Yes, this is two. Yes. So they're both at 95 Fen Road? No, no, they're not. The second yeah. one is so like what's the right road. address? 205 Kelsey. 205 Kelsey, oh, 205. Kelsey is. Yes. Right, yeah. Oh, that's the owner. Yeah, but that's what it's the same person who owns both pieces of property? Yeah. No, it yeah. is. Okay, so there yeah. Owner Reno Properties, LLC, contact Alex, Alex uh, Mutzabaugh. <clears throat> okay, very good. Sorry for that confusion, Chairman. And so this is pretty much the same thing, except a different location. Uh, Eric will pull up the location map. Yeah. This would be on the parking lot, I believe, uh, the excess parking lot. Right, that one there is, is the tent is set down from the more than 20 some feet away from the road. It's set down. Building here. Because I went around and put up all the signs for the, you mm -hmm. know, the commission. Is that the old pizza joint? Yeah, it's the old uh, yeah. Angelo's Michael there. Michael's. Angelo's. And there's no tenant in there right now at the present time, so I don't see a problem with that location. Were these the money property owners notified? Can we approve this one? Or no, we no. 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 Oh, later. Okay. Just went out late. Any questions for the applicant concerning this location? Any special staff comments on this one? No, it's the same same exact situation and pretty much the same comments okay. that we had. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And we'll uh, we'll address these in two weeks. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Is um have somebody in Zoom for the first petition, possibly? I do not. Okay. So I recommend at this point, Mr. Chair, that you just continue the uh, application 29-22, no, 24-22. The existing freestanding sign at 295 Main Street until next meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll move that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made, uh, made and moved by Commissioner Woods. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Droz. Um any discussion? Yeah. All those? Yes, Tom. Um, as far as this, is, is there a way that we can put this into our regs? I mean, it seems to be a pretty standard uh, thing. This is an existing sign, right? correct? They're just changing it to uh, electronic? Correct. Um, Ms. If I may, through yes. chair, answer this. This is in our regulations. We changed our regulations recently to allow conversion, which was previously prohibited to these LED type of signs on gas stations. So what they're proposing to do up until a few months ago wasn't actually allowed to do. The reason why they're coming to you is because this is uh, signs in general, freestanding signs are special permit use and significant modification of special permit requires a public hearing by our regulation. <clears throat> so that is actually in the regulation and the process <clears throat> is uh, as such that requires um, the, this sort of thing. Okay, so any other questions? Well, we, we had some conversation about these type of signs and also the electronic menu boards. Um, they, they seem to be a pretty cut and dry 
I well, saying. well, we have them in the regulations. So like she said, that uh, it, it becomes a public hearing in case there's neighbors or whatever that want to come in and comment on it. It may be the conversation better held under different subject on the agenda. Mm -hmm. However, the reason why this is a special permit and the reason why commission held it under special permit when we originally talked about this was that in this particular case, we are talking about properties in B zone. B zones are small parcels surrounded by residential neighborhood. So that is where commission felt, and I agree that we should have a bit more oversight. So, you know, if, if we are to have this conversation, we should do it under different agenda heading, but that's the reason why we're yeah. doing it this way. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is now in the room on Zoom. Okay. Um, okay, before we, we have a motion on the floor before we close it, um, the applicant can, Make a presentation. Okay, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, I'm here. Okay. So it's just for an upgrade to an LED price sign, similar in size of the existing. Can you describe the location, the address? Like, um, can you tell us a little bit about what is this? Like in the more detail, please. So it's 295 Main Street. Um, it's in the same location as the existing sign. Um, it's the same footing. It's, it's, it's the same poles. It's just changing the boxes from the font um, to uh, LED di digits. I did put it up. Okay, there you go. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, it's starting with Mr. Straightforward, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, oh, as you're you, welcome. As you're well aware, we're going to uh, table this, but then we will uh, uh, vote on this in two weeks. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. All right, so we have a, a motion and a second on the floor for um, continuing this. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then uh, the next thing on the agenda we might as well do is uh, we have a motion to continue petition 28-22. 20, motion made by Vice Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner. Um, any discussion? And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries to uh, continue uh, petition 28-22. And the next thing uh, we have is uh, a suggested uh, motion to continue <clears throat> petition dash 29 dash 22. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Coffey. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We will take those uh, three uh, petitions up in two weeks. The um, motion uh, approval for minutes. Do I have a entertain motion for approval of minutes of May 25th, 2022? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion moved, made by Commissioner Woods. Do I have a second? second? Seconded. Any discussion? Any corrections of the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries for the approval of the minutes. Um, we are at uh, new business. And we have a pre-application discussion for 1170 Main Street, which I believe they're on Zoom. Yes. yes. You can, Joe Plouffe, you can un unmute yourself.
Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, hey, how's it going, y'all? Um, we are looking at 1170 um, Main Street uh, to possibly put uh, Hanging Hills Brewing Company into the northwest corner of the building here. Um, we are here because there are two churches, if I remember correctly, uh, within close proximity of the building. Yes. So, so let, let's just start this by, first of all, this is a pre-application discussion in front of the commission. The Kini factory recently changed ownership. The new owners are interested in perhaps renting one part of it, which is located sort of on a back portion where that, um, and Eric will show the, the floor. So the main street is, Eric, show it. Mm -hmm. there, there is main street. The post office is on the other side Across there. The street, this is Lowry. So it's on, so where they're talking about perhaps <laughs> occupying space for a brewery would be there. So a um, couple of things that come to mind. First of all, we have for um, quite a few years contemplated how great it would be to have a brewery in this location. So um, having a brewery in Kini factory is great. However, there, there are two things that I wanted them to talk to commission about. Get introduced to the commission, number one. And uh, number two is this place is within thousand feet of a place of worship. Under our regulation, the commission has the ability to uh, essentially issue a waiver of separation distance requirement for, um, and it's under sales of liquor. That's, that's how that's regulated. Sales of liquor cannot be located within a thousand feet. Um, so you can waive that distance requirement. So I wanted them to vet that with you ahead of time before they actually apply. And then the second part is they're also contemplating using some of our parking um, because of, and, and Joe, please jump in at any time. Yeah, but yeah. The way, the way they're positioned, the space is positioned, the back of the building, they would like to rent that more towards like industrial use of the building because of how building is set. You We're know, it, it lends docks. itself. It has loading docks and things like that. They Basically. don't want their brewery people uh, cr walking around where the where the trucks are and you know that kind of traffic. So, so those are the things <laughs> that you probably should talk to them about. Is, is this location on this across from the empty lot that's on? Uh, oh. That's not. Right, that's no. that, That's Doctor May or old Doctor. So, May so this is Doctor Rob. Can you? Can you Bloom that out so we can see what streets on the north, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the first building you, you see, I believe, is a dry cleaner, right? So yeah. you count down. The fourth one is, is a dentist building. So this is uh, Attorney Sabatini. Yeah. This is the dry cleaner that recently closed, and then we're going right down. Yeah. I think uh, I think Walter Walterion's, I think, is where right. Newington Pizza is. Yeah. The only reason I ask is there is a vacant piece of property there. Doesn't that property belong to Keeney? Yes, it's farther down. Right, right. That's correct. <clears throat> the applicant can continue, please. Yeah. So thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate this. Um, you'll notice that um, uh, there's a highlighted section uh, on Eric's screen here of the hang where Hang Hills Brewery would be. Uh, and just to the right of that is an active driveway. Um, and then on the on the very bottom of the building, there's a lot of parking, but unfortunately we don't want people to be able to uh, travel through that area. Uh, it would be an active uh, loading dock for Hanging Hills, as well as any other potential manufacturing companies that might move into that space. So it wouldn't necessarily be a safe walking zone for people. Um, and Renata, thank you for bringing that up because I I'd actually forgotten that we were here for that as well. Um, but yeah, we were hoping to be able to use some of the, the parking on Market Square and as well as some of the municipal lot parking uh, a little bit around Kitty Corner from that, from that building. 
Um, and then there's now, also, Joe, sorry. Can you just tell commission a little bit about like your hours and how that works and your yeah. load, like how people like visit your breweries? Um, so traditionally breweries don't, don't keep bar hours and Hanging Hills would not buck from that tradition. Um, we would not have a full liquor license. We would just be manufacturing our own beers. Um, I'm sorry. I don't think there was a question. No, oh, I, if you could, ex if you, it's a big building. If you could explain to the commissioners exactly what you're going to do, you're going to, it's, it looks like you're going to stud out an area for this business. Yes. Provide, provide utilities. Yeah. So um, I'll go back to the hours real quick and then I'll talk about the space itself. Um, so the hours of operation uh, would be five or six days a week. Um, never after 10 p.m., uh, unless there was a special occasion, uh, and probably never before 12 p.m. So it would be a very, uh, a very limited hours. Uh, during the Monday through Thursday, it would more than likely be somewhere between 4 and, and 10 o'clock uh, at the latest. Um, and then as far as the build out of the space, we're looking at about 5,000 square feet of that total building. Um, right where Eric just had the screen. Um, yeah. yeah, so it would be 5,000. We would actually have to plumb and run electricity and uh, make sure that there was natural gas available in the space uh, for us to run our equipment. Mr. Chair, the owner of the building, new owner is also in the room, I can see him. So they can also talk about, you know, other use of the building area and why this location was selected, I suppose. Certainly, uh, if you'd like to discuss that, uh, if the owner would like to discuss some of the other uses and how this works in there, or are we, are you leaving room in case the business needs to expand in the future, things like that? Uh, hello, my name is Roy Stillman. Uh, and uh, I am from, uh, from Stillman Development International. And yes, we are the, uh, the new owner of, uh, of the property as well as the two vacant lots uh, on Market Square. Um, and good evening and thank you for the ability to, uh, to meet you tonight. Um, the, um, we, we hope that we will be able to um, make some use modifications to the building that would be more consistent from a planning perspective uh, 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 to the location that the site uh, enjoys uh, in the center of town. Um, this uh, this uh, uh, effort to uh, place the brewery there is, is really a uh, a, a, a test, a very interesting test to the future identity uh, of, of many of the uses to the building. Um, separately, we have shown to planning uh, a completely reimagined uh, storefront uh, uh, on Main Street, which is, a, in my opinion, a very attractive uh, um, modification to the existing uh, storefront. The original building was had a sort of an Art Deco type uh, 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 design heritage, um, and it was uh, covered over over the years. Um, and uh, and so, pardon me. Uh, and and we would um, be you know, uncovering that and sort of enhancing the uh, some graceful lines on the front. I think much to the um, uh, you know. Uh, benefit of the streetscape, and that would uh, be intended to be retail. Um, uh, as to the, the middle of, you know, the, the far, the far east uh, separate warehouse building, it, it's its DNA is pure um, industrial warehouse distribution because of the loading docks and the high ceilings. The center is really a very um, interesting puzzle, and uh, it would be my goal. Uh, that uh, over time it would become more of a sort of public benefit type space. And by public benefit, I mean attracting uh, uh, local folks um, that want to have some sort of a recreation type uh, experience 
um, as opposed to more of a manufacturing heritage. Um, it may be, it may take a while to fully transition uh, the building to that, but I hope that it would, would do so. Um, and uh, we are in, in discussion right now with other users that uh, are very complementary uh, to, uh, to a brewery, not involving alcohol sales, but complementary to, to uh, the concept of a, sort of a creative business like a microbrewery. Um, and, and if we can get a critical mass going, I think that we would um, really be able to take a, a long step in, in that direction. Um, the center of this building has two floors. We're, of course, dealing with the top floor. As to the bottom, uh, we're also uh, talking with planning about some incubator space to sort of grow businesses. Um, and, um, and that also is, in a way, similar um, in, in, in its effort to uh, reposition. As I said, it may take a while to fully implement that plan. It may be a hybrid for a while, uh, but that's our long-term goal. Uh, we think that the brewery uh, is, a, uh, is an excellent use and it would enjoy uh, some outdoor seating. Uh, it would enjoy um, uh, you know, peaceful access. Uh, as Mr. Plouffe correctly said, we're not going to have people walking in a driveway uh, and, and risking safety issues. Um, and, uh, and, and we hope that this is sort of a, a leading the, the future of, of uh, the center of this building. Um, so that's uh, why we asked to, uh, to present to you tonight um, and to uh, get your opinions and hopefully a blessing um, that, uh, that we may proceed. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, will you be able to access the brewery from, from Market Square? So if somebody was walking down Market Square and they decided to go into the brewery, would they be able to access the brewery? We're actually talking about that, and I'm glad you asked. Um, there is that footpath uh, from market uh, towards where the brewery is, is planning to be located. Um, I, I'm under the impression that that's private property for the time being, uh, but we're, we're uh, hoping in the big picture to be able to open that up uh, to drive uh, foot traffic from Market and Market Square over towards um, Hanging Hills. And then also um, on the Main Street side, um, there is a, right now it's an unfinished green pathway. There's some gravel towards Main Street and then it becomes much more green. Um, that would also encourage traffic, to, uh, foot, foot traffic, excuse me, to be coming uh, to the space. Um, but as of right now, uh, it, it's totally up in the air because it is the, the footpath coming from market is private property. And, and where would you have an outside seating area, uh, have room for an outside? I think it's an excellent idea to have a nice patio outside. Um, where would that be? Yeah, and, and outdoor seating is, is the wave uh, for all breweries now. I mean, and not just breweries, but for restaurants. So it, it's almost uh, a foregone conclusion that you need it. Um, so where we would put the outdoor seating is uh, just to the, where the, there's like a little arrow and there are doors going into the space there. And so the outdoor seating would be on either side of that door. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Woods. So there is no access to the site right now. Right. The, the, the only access that you have would be on the south side of the building, which you don't want to use. Um, it is private property to the north. So yep. you have to gain, I believe there's a narrow driveway on the Newington Pizza building that's maybe eight to 10 mm -hmm. feet wide, but you'd have to negotiate obviously yep. with that landowner yep. to see yep. if you could use that, that piece of property. Um, the piece a little bit further to the west is an active parking lot for that dentist's office. So right. I, don't think you're going to be able to use that um, as a right of way because they're confined to, I think, only four or five parking spots in there right now. And I'm definitely not opposed to the idea, except you couldn't have picked a worse spot uh, in the building uh, to, to access. Uh, but again, if you could figure it out, um, we would love to be able to work with you and, and help you through this. I well, think we, it would be sorry, a good fix. I didn't yeah, oh, go ahead. 
and, I, and those are very valid points uh, that are kind of going to be uh, technical decisions along the way as to how we get uh, people to be able to walk through um, that. There's like that pathway coming from Main Street. Um, also what was proposed uh, by Stillman was to move the entire brewery uh, towards the storefront side on market um, where there is, uh, that would allow parking uh, on the building side as well as access from the front. So that, you know, it's not off the table for us to relocate the space. The reason why we like the current location is because of the loading docks. But again, that's not, it's not the end of the world if we have to relocate. We do like the building, we like the downtown location. We do like Newington as, as, a, as a center for business. Um, but we, we really like those loading docks and the ability to transfer large equipment and, and um, you know, grain deliveries directly to our place of business. And also, as Roy mentioned, uh, Roy was absolutely correct. The uh, when you, if you see the space, um, it's gorgeous. It's brick. Uh, there are these old bricked up uh, former windows that we would like to open up eventually. That would look into the the rest of the building. Um, it does offer a lot of aesthetic features that that are you know very helpful to have a brewery. Um, so, I mean, there are, you know, there are certain things that we like about aesthetically, plus also, you know, from a logistical standpoint, high ceilings, the loading dock, those things sort of work in our favor to be in that space, but your point is well taken. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Just on one more point. I mean, it would be great if you can work something out with a property owner to make that happen. If not, maybe you can work with the current property owner to move to the east to where the vacant lots are on Market Square and access it that way. Obviously, it's a little bit longer of a walk, but that might be doable too. Although I don't know what the plans are for the, you know, the two lots that are on Market Square or one large lot. Right. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. Permit me to uh, to add that. Um, you know, we have, uh, I personally am in agreement that from an access perspective, uh, the space off of Main Street uh, is, is easier. And we have made that available to Mr. Plouffe. Um, he has a different perspective. Uh, he's uh, thinking about logistics of moving supplies and, and he likes the um, sort of raw industrial nature of the bones of the building there. Uh, but I can tell you that um, if at the end of the analysis, Mr. Plouffe would like to move to the left of the drawing, um, uh, we would uh, be in favor of that. Okay. Um, and uh, I think it would make uh, customer access easier. Mr. Plouffe feels it would make supply access harder. Uh, I'll leave that to his discretion if we get that far. And what I mean by that is, you know, the first step along, along the road is the blessing of the town. Exactly. Um, and, and, and if we have that, then, uh, then Mr. Plouffe and I will work together to find uh, you know, what's, uh, what's in the best interests of the uh, vitality of the business. Okay, thank you. And then just well, one more question. I know of one church because I belong to it. Where is the other church? So it's 1075 Main Street, which is the Church of Christ Congregation. And it's across the street in Best Market Plaza. Oh, there's a church in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah it got approved right before Mr. Minor left. Okay. Oh, I think I do remember that now. I, believe it's like a, I think it's like a Brazilian church. <laughs> I believe yeah. it is, yes. Yeah, I think you're Brazilian correct. Catholic church. I remember now, yeah. Now, if I may interject for just a minute. So the point of pre-application meetings is, as you know, but perhaps the newest member may not know, is this conversation is not binding. So, you know, whatever happens here does not guarantee your vote for or against in the future or nothing like that. However, there are two basic things that you should let the applicant know if you have strong feelings again about. And one is whether or not you have some kind of strong feelings with regards to having a brewery or a place that sells liquor within 500 feet of an existing place of worship. So that's question number one. Then question number two, regardless of which particular part of the building is chosen for location of this brewery, whether or not you have a, a major objection to them using town parking lot or town street, 
as a main provision for their parking because no matter what they end up doing, their preference will be to use off-site parking for this brewery because they're trying to stay on the backside of the building where they will primarily depend on our parking. So there won't be any parking at all in the alleyway there or between the two buildings there? He's not going to provide any parking? I think that alley may be too narrow to actually provide parking with like, you know, Right. If you move to the front of the building, there's a front parking lot. They would use that, wouldn't they? Well, you you can if you want to, but then you're going like around, round, around, around the building, and I don't know if people will use it. And that, that does, that, doesn't the zoning allow it? Because he's in the he's in downtown. Right? Zoning so, zoning does allow it, but it's a special permit use yeah. on both ends. Right. So so I just want to know. If this is like something that will be a major objection, they should know that ahead of time. Also, if I might add, I'm, and not, to, I'm sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but if, if we did agree to move to the Market Street location, we do have parking available uh, on the Lowry side. There's a large parking lot there. Um, but I did want to add, you know, at our previous location, we would have, you know, like these days where, you know, like a bus would come through or, or like 300 people would come by. Um, and it just, you know, it's sort of unpredictable that way, especially in the summertime, you just start to get these waves of people and there will be people who aren't able to park in that main lot who will end up using municipal parking. Um, and I just want to let, you know, make sure that, that was clear that people will be parking on market, they'll be parking in various spaces near, near as close to the brewery as they can. Thank you. <clears throat> and a question. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner. Joe. Um, parking is the main thing for me. Uh, I feel that, you know, if we're going to do something with this building, there's definitely has to be more parking done to the east of where they're proposing. Uh, yeah. And for any, any continuation of uh, you know, re, re shuffling this, this building, uh, as far as our parking, you know, our parking is, uh, you know, across market square and, uh, Steve's, uh, you know, that, that parking is not our parking. Uh, our parking is way, way over into, into the, uh, municipal lot. Quite a, quite a ways away. Okay, so we can decide now if we would rather have empty buildings or if we would rather have busy parking. <laughs> well, I, I, so I have a question. That's really a decision. Oh, well, I, 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 one at a time here, please. One at a time. Com finish up Commissioner Gill, and then I'm going to have Commissioner Clappy. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Well, I mean, there's a lot of land over there that can be put into parking. And and not take in into uh, the loading dock area. Okay, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Claffey. I, I mean, my biggest concern as a commission, as one member of the commission, is is on any given day on a weekend in Market Square, if there's events in town or anything like that, you know, our municipal lot is pretty full. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really get the parking of trying to get the guidance of the commission to say, yes, you can use our municipal lot when there's hundreds of parking spaces on this property. That's my only concern. I'm not saying it's a bad location for the business, but I've been to many breweries that you walk through parking lots on their property past loading docks to get to the back end of the brewery. That That's my only concern. I mean, I'm looking at it. You know, it, it, trying to push parking onto other parts of the community to make a, a, a business successful, you're going to rely on somebody else's parking other than the parking we have right here on their lot. I mean, yeah, there's some pedestrian concerns I would have also, but there's ample parking on that block of land, in my opinion, as one commissioner. Sir, so. um, what what parking spots are, are you referring to just so i can understand I, i'm just the, not the, the lot that goes from main street all the way down lowry place to the opposite end of 
the road, which would be the south side, Lowry Place, across from the post office. That whole side of the building is parking lot. Yeah, and that's that's what I, I agree. Uh, you know, we were just talking about if the if the brewery was not located on the back side of the building and it was located on the Market Street side, we would have access to that parking lane. The the, the problem that we're facing with that corner lot that I do. I might end up having to move, but the reason why that parking or that, that corner lot is a problematic is because of the active loading dock, not large enough to allow trucks to pass through as well as pedestrian safety. But if we shift locations, there's ample parking, uh, just the ones you just mentioned. Okay, thank you. You know, I don't have a problem with them sharing some of the the parking, the municipal parking lot, because I think there's going to be off hours. I don't think it's going to be the same hours as uh, some of the existing businesses down there. I don't. I wouldn't want them to depend on it totally, but I, I have no problem with them sharing some of that space. Commissioner Woods? Yeah. I mean, I think we need to be forward thinking. I'm taking a leap, but I mean, this is, how you going to compare this right now? And this is the very first piece that I'm seeing, but West Hartford Center, it's got to start somewhere. This is a walkable downtown, right? That's what we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there's not a business in West Hartford, or there might be one or two, and they probably have three or four parking spaces if they're lucky. Um, they don't have any parking. It's all municipal parking. You you get out of your car and walk up to a half, three quarters of a mile to get to the restaurant, bar, shop, whatever you're going to. Um, I, I love, I absolutely love the idea. Maybe we can work out something um, and we maybe we condition it that you, you can use that southern side of the building uh, for parking and then you create a sidewalk um, along Main Street, which there already is there, but to come down on the north side of the building to access it. Um, but I, we've got to start somewhere. And I, and I think I know what they're, you're, you're looking at. My guess is the inside of this building is spectacular and it's going to look really, really nice once you do it all up. Uh, for a brewery. I get that, but boy, it just, it, you're picking a hard spot to get to, but um, I, I would like to be able to continue working with you as one of the commissioners on this to try to make it um, come true. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Um, commissioner Haggerty has a, has a Go right hand. ahead, Commissioner Haggerty. Uh, thank you. I have a question for the applicant. This is intended to be a brew pub correct on-site consumption? Yes, sir. All right. um, and then, so two points. One, uh, Commissioner Woods totally stole my thunder um, with the whole West Hartford parking. I mean, I, I'm not concerned about parking at all. I mean, you get the patrons close enough and they'll figure it out. Um, they're going to visit the brew pub for the, for the brewery, the atmosphere. Um, people will, will, you get them close enough and they'll figure it out. And like Commissioner Woods just said, in West Hartford Square, you're never parking in front of wherever it is that you want to go. You're parking remotely and then taking the heel toe express. Um, so I think parking is fine. It'll work itself out. It's a non-issue as far as the being uh, within 500 feet of a place of worship. I mean, I also think that's also a non-issue. I mean, we, we just allowed a dispensary adult cannabis dispensary within a couple hundred feet of a residence, I think allowing a brewery within 500 feet, uh, of a place of worship, just I don't know, personally, somewhat of an antiquated regulation, but no concern on my end about that at all. And those would be my only two points. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Haggerty. <clears throat> Commissioner Woods. Yeah, on the alcohol, I mean, the point is you have Roosters across the street, which has a full bar. You have what, what's the other one there? TJ's. The, the, yeah, TJ's and then the Brick, 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 Brick Card Pub. Is that what it's called? So, I mean, there's, there's already establishments that are much closer. I've got no issue with that yep. at all. And I, and I could believe I could speak for most of the members of the church. I don't think they're going to have any issue with it either. Yep. I, I don't have an issue with it. I think the, the biggest concern was making sure that you pick the right location that access can get so that you're successful. Uh, we want to make sure people can get there and, and a nice uh, patio area, um, I think, uh, would be a big hit. Any other questions from the commissioners? No. Tom Planner? No, no. I hope we were able to provide you enough information. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, that you continue looking at it. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, this is a, actually a really informational meeting for me. So I appreciate it very much.
Okay. And thank you very much. And thank you from my perspective. I appreciate the opportunity to meet you and to discuss the matter. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Next thing on the agenda is old business. We have a uh, petition 26-22, CGS 8-24 mandatory referral, John Patterson parking lot expansion. So we're just going to uh, uh, move this uh, uh, favorably. Uh, last meeting, we all talked about it, but uh, didn't get it didn't get moved, unfortunately. Um, but uh, it did not delay the process of anything, correct? No, Renata? correct. Nothing got delayed on, uh, on their end. So uh, I'd entertain a motion for um, this 8-24, please. Can I read it, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. A motion to issue a favorable referral under this uh, CGS Connected General Statute 8-24 for site improvements, including ad adding of 30 new parking spaces, site lighting and grading at John Patterson Elementary School, 120 Church Street findings. The proposed site improvements address the school needs and are consistent with a plan of conservation and development. Thank you, Commissioner Woods. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Claffey. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. The um, next three petitions on old business have been continued. Correct. And we have some things scheduled for public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, so we yep. have put in um, an application for the zoning regulation amendment to um, regulate the mechanical units. The Zoning Board of Appeals, one of the like really most frequent variance requests is the setback request variance for a setback relief for the installation of AC units, condensers, like things like that. So once you have something that goes to the ZBA over and over and over again, essentially it tells you like it's a, something you should probably make a regulation for, which is what we drafted for, and we will be presenting that to you in a month. It goes to Krog and, you know, the whole nine mm -hmm. months. And then the second one is a little bit more consequential, and I want to talk to the commission about it a little bit. So we had passed last year, and last year first part, and then again this year, the, the other zoning district, our cannabis regulations. So right now we allow, uh, we previously allowed medical dispensaries, and we allowed the medical producers, and then we added to that micro growers, and we allowed hybrid and normal, oh. the active cannabis um, retailers in PD zones, uh, Berlin Turnpike zone, uh, micro cultivators are allowed in PD and industrial zones. When I presented these new amendments to you, I told you that under state cap, there was a rule that says the retailers and micro cultivators were kept one for 25,000 people in community. So New Inkton could have had only one retailer. They didn't cap hybrids, but they capped at the time retailers and they capped micro cultivators. Number of towns around us had uh, moratoriums while they were working on their cannabis regulations. And that is kind of, those moratoriums are now coming to <clears throat> expiration end. Couple of weeks ago, without any notice at all, through some pretty like secluded imp implementer bill, <coughs> the state legislature passed a rule which eliminated this cap of 25,000 person, mm -hmm. which got me really worried because um, First of all, I told you that you shouldn't worry about anything because there was a cap, right? So that regulated how many we could have. And then second of all, I worry that now towns around us that have moratorium will just say no, will restrict sales and production. And then the towns that do allow, like we, will end up under like really big pressure to allow um, entry to, to these kind of establishments. 
So we drafted a regulation amendment, which essentially will propose to limit what we have right now. I just across board put a limit to two hybrid and combined hybrid and retailers and one micro cultivator just in case we get one. But that's the reason why we why I'm proposing this new amendment. I think we should, you know, I'll explain this in a hearing, but we probably should sit on it a little bit, see what happens around us, and then, you know, in a few years reassess. You know, if 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 this is really not a problem, then we can change our regulations and add more more places if, if we're okay with that. So that's that's that. But that was a, that was a little like, where did this come from? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we're moving to town planners report. Absolutely, go right ahead. So um, on the future agenda, <laughs> we've got our next meeting, a bunch of these these three items that got moved from this meeting, we have 65 Halls Avenue and 4 Hartford Avenue. 4 Hartford Avenue is modifying access. That's the new gas station on that intersection. And they're actually requested to modify access by the state. So they will be presenting to you that as a site plan modification. Vehicular access. Vehicular access. Yeah. Hartford yeah. Avenue is the state. Yeah. Slightly. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you before I turn it over to Eric is um, I got a grant and I told you this some months ago to do a Newington Junction historic loop project, which is, um, you know, I wanted to do something about promoting those historic homes around Newington Junction. And that was really you know, if we're if we're looking at the TOD district out there, that district is going to be different than this district near Cedar. That just neighborhood is different. So we might as well start by preservation of historic the area and then maybe like designing that if we end up doing the TOD there, designing that TOD around that, like differently a little bit. So that report is done. We will be presenting it to the council next Tuesday, and then I will share. I'm like really happy how that report came. That's like um, a, a good little project that we did. So we'll share that with you. Well, I didn't do it. We hired a consultant and she's just brilliant. Like she's like just amazing. <laughs> I, I got lucky with real expert. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll share that report and recommendations, and then we'll take it. We'll, we'll see what um, we can do with like seeking funding. Um, going forward from there. Um, I reached out because I haven't heard talking about Newington Junction. I haven't heard anything from Krog in a pretty long time about the study that they were doing on that. So I reached out to them recently and they said that they were delayed because other towns did not provide them information they were seeking. So they just got what they needed and they are going to be scheduling a meeting. So I should have some kind of update on that to you in July um, with regards to that. So that ends my report for this meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank um, you. Any questions for Renata before we move on? Go ahead, Eric. No, so I was just gonna touch on some topics and things that we discussed in, in my TASIO training. Um, I had, two separate weeks of. So, um, and these are topics that a lot of other towns experience and, and you know, the, the attorneys that were teaching it were, were hammering home some of these points that, you know, uh, boards and commission and staff should be aware of, certainly. Um, many appeals of, of land use decisions are pretty much based on procedural errors. A lot of times, sometimes at the staff level with, with missing dates and cutoffs and stuff like that. Other times, from your perspective, from a commission level, um, reasons for that are, you know, discussions and evidence entered into the record after public hearings have closed um, and, and, and stuff like that. Conditioning approvals on offsite improvements. Um, uh, those are pretty big for mm -hmm. getting appealed. Um, 
So just before you go further, introduction. Eric went to school and I asked him to summarize from, for you what he learned as a part of like education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what we're doing right now. And part of this is really the attorneys that teach this stuff go over some things that are, it's a good refresher. I think it's a good little reminder, like don't talk after the hearing is closed, like no new information to be entered into record. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, and and they're and they're citing case law, you know. So the, so there's there's case law out there. Um, time limits of applications are also very important, and again, those are all at the staff level. Um, but one that you guys should be aware of, especially for TPZ site plan approvals that go beyond 65 days, if you don't make a decision, automatically approved. Just if you automatically approved, yes. So if we fail, if we miss the deadline, people just can walk out, and it's approval yeah like it's, it's a pretty big deal site plans that meet zoning regulations they should always just you know be approved um where you guys have the purview and, and more discretion is under special permits so yeah you get to look at those separate impacts uh, of things that are in our regulations and and the public brings them up as well but those are the things that you guys have more more discretion about um definitions within the zoning regulations are, are extremely important if they're very vague or undefined even, and you go to court, you know, it's pretty much up to the judge. You know, if they, they'll look at common law or what other surrounding towns are doing with the definition, and okay, that's what we like, and that's what you may end up being stuck with. So that's also very important. Um, and that's a big area in our regulation that we need is, to work on. Is weak. Our, yes. our, we have the, the most random things defined, and the things that really need to be defined the live definitions for um, substantial evidence that's what you should base all your decisions on for the land use boards should be based on the evidence provided not speculation or hearsay stuff like that conflict of interest is another big one you know most of you are aware of it always trying to avoid the appearance of conflict of interest if you can um, we as staff can't make you recuse yourselves. The public can't make you recuse yourselves from application. That's really up to you guys, what you feel you need to do or not do. Um, starting 2023, land use board members are gonna be required through the state to get four hours of training each year. And I think uh, OPM is gonna be setting up some coursework classes, whether it's virtual, whether we have somebody in, like we had the, the land use mm -hmm. academy in and, and, and do some sessions or stuff like that. It's undecided. Uh, we talked about a lot about inclusionary zoning, which is big right now, and that's any zoning regulation that promotes the development of affordable housing. Um, some of the ways in which you can do that are you can do it with deed restrictions, um, density uh, reductions, and or payments into a housing trust as well. So those are, are ways that you can use that. TPZ cannot render a decision on an application where wetlands are involved until the final decision has been made by the wetlands agency. Oh, so this is okay. So let's let's stop for this. So there was a comment that was made, and I actually misinformed you at the meeting publicly on this. So uh, some months ago, I uh, reached out to town attorney, our town attorney, and asked for an opinion on this because I used to work in a town that had combined planning and wetlands commission. And I never had to deal with these um, dates between the two agencies. I never had to actually like deal with that for all these years that I did this. Um, so the attorney issued an opinion, but the opinion was like out of context, I suppose. It wasn't, it was, you know, not really, you know, whatever. So, I advised you, I advised you that it was okay to render a decision on the planning, on site plans and on, on planning matters before you got final opinion or final decision from the wetlands. And that was inaccurate. So that's, that's not right. I gave you the wrong oh. information on that. Okay. So that, that's Eric's school. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
for some of you that may not realize, variance, approved variances run with the land, not the property owner. We've had cases where sometimes the property owner comes in, well, I got it over here, I'm just gonna move me. It's like, doesn't work that way. Um, this is another big one currently. If, that, if the town is under 10% of their affordable units and by 830G, a developer can come in and you know zoning is out the window. If they pick a parcel and like, hey, we're going in here and this is what we're doing. And, there's, you know, and we're going to lose in court more than like, which we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, meeting minutes are not required to be verbatim. We are keeping them verbatim. And that's fine. It's, 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 Our meeting minutes are decent. Yeah. And, and I think the, I think that I'm shocked that they're saying that they don't not required to be verbatim, but I think it's important to keep yeah, them right. verbatim. It is. The appointment of the CEO myself um, must be accepted and approved by TPZ and also by Inland Wetlands as the agent. At some point, we can. So do we? They did not, <clears throat> so we have to fix that. Yeah, you guys yeah. actually have to. You can, yeah, that's yeah, your we decision. We ha have to do this. We have to probably fix this okay. at some point because I don't think that I think in somehow in town of Newington. The zeal got appointed by town manager, right. but that's not statutorily. It's not accurate. Like we have to do it. And, there, and there's been this has happened as well, where you know non-appointed ZEOs have lost in court because mm -hmm. we can take care of that properly yeah. done. Um, we talked a lot about, which doesn't really affect Newington, but a lot of coastal and tidal wetland stuff, which is quite a bit of information. You know, Connecticut has a lot of coastline, rivers, and lakes. So non-conforming uses, intensification is generally permissible and an expansion or extension is not. And, and then that's local regulations are gonna apply, so. And we have to write better zoning regulations about that. Right. Um, if anything, they'd like to see the non-conformity uh, be reduced. Correct. Even though there's still non-conformity, as long as some of it's been reduced, you can, right? Yes. You can, if you can reduce as much as we can, yeah. and we can see going forward, you know, like one of the big discussions was um, second story additions. Um, you know, like in Newington, we have a lot of single family, one floor houses, old house that's five feet from the property line. So they want to go vertical. A lot of towns have put in regulations about vertical expansions. Okay, they have to meet the existing roof line, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have any regulations about that. So if I ever get one coming down the pike, I'll probably send a kick it over to ZBA to see how they feel about it. But when we rewrite the regulations, you know, if this is what we want to do, then we should include that or, or something, because I think it's probably going to come up more. Um, lastly, this one's probably more for wetlands, but you guys as well. Site walks are considered a meeting and must be properly noticed with minutes. Um, if the public is not allowed, or invited on the site by the applicant shouldn't even be held. Correct. Huh? Correct. Yeah, public has to be re invited. So those are some of the big topics, and there was probably case law on pretty much every point that I said I've talked about. Um, you know, so they're just trying to help staff. Go ahead, Commissioner. With the board. Question? Yeah. <clears throat> on that, if, if so, if there, let's say we decide to do a say walkthrough. Mm -hmm. um, the applicant has to agree that the public yes. is, is they're not automatically granted because we're having a public meeting. Huh? I mean, so. it, it should be like yeah. the attorney said, they said, well, some applicants will say, oh, my insurance isn't going to cover it. And he said, that's out the window. So then you if they do, yeah, you have the site walk. If they don't want the public there, then you don't have the site walk and you make a decision based, you know, okay. you, you move forward. All right. That was, that was their, their opinion on that. Thank you. And, and even if, so, and another thing, FOI considers like two or more people that go to a site mm -hmm. as a meeting. So you shouldn't, you know, either every, we're all there or nobody's there kind of situation. But each individual commissioner is, there's nothing wrong with them going to take their own. If each individual commissioner went to look at a site. They, nothing, they discuss that. It's, what they, they say it's not the best idea. They said everybody should go. They said they really... I'm saying that even in general, when things come up on the agenda, 
at least I do. I go around, I check the place out. I think some of the other commissioners do too. But I understand what you're saying, though. If if you were going to have a, a sidewalk, it's best to do it as a meeting instead of individually. I understand right. that. Right. And that's in, in the past, based on prior town attorney's opinions or whatever, what's happened with wetlands is that's the way they've done it. Each commissioner goes by themselves and, and does their own thing. And that's the way they've done it. And that's the way they've been been kind of been told. So. So I think the distinction is if you are there by yourself, but truly by yourself, like you're not supposed to be interacting with property owner, asking questions, like neighbors. talking to anybody. That's that's the real thing. Like yeah. if you're there walking around with your notebook, writing notes and then reporting on what you have seen and observed and, you know, at the meeting in front of the public, then that's that's cool. That's yeah. all good. Or the chair makes a recommendation if you have time, stop by. Right. You know, between now and the next meeting, right? That's and that makes some sense. But, the, so that's really it. The training uh, requirement for the commissioners um, is required in the, in 20, next year. Twenty. It's going to be four hours over a period of two years. Right. Is going to include some training in equity, diversity, fair housing. Um, you know, housing in general have, kind of matters. Yes. They have things that they want covered. Yes. And, and it's going to be created by, you know, it's going to be created. It's CCAPA, um, you know, the organizations, planning organizations are working on it. Will it be in, per, they don't know whether it'll be a Zoom application or it's in It's going person. to be a combination of things. That's my guess. Yeah, it's going to be a combination of things. Okay. And it's going, I mean, it's only four hours. Frankly, I think that's, it's high time for something like that to be, I mean, it's commissioners need training, not just the procedural stuff, but need training in these planning matters. Like that is something that, everybody should want to have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Commissioner Woods? Yeah, when I first got on Zoning Board of Appeals back in the 80s, we would have a lawyer come in at least once or twice a year and do a training session for an hour, hour and a half. We'd have a special meeting. And they would go over, you know, different topics. Yeah. On the Zoning Board of Appeals. On the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, we, we did it on TPZ years and years ago too. Every year we would have the town attorney come in and go over a few things, especially since there was some new commissioners. I so, wish we could do that more often. I yeah, wish I, I could I'm get clear to, to do it like every year. I'm open know. to it, and I think the other commissioners are open to it. So, and all the land use boards, wetlands as well. I know. I don't think since I've been doing it, they've had any kind. Even of the council problem. was interested in it. Yeah. 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 Okay, fantastic. Any other commissioners have any questions? Okay, we're at public participation. Is there anybody from the, the Krog letter? Well, the Krog's letter there. Did anybody have any questions? One, one question? Go right ahead. The, Commissioner. the West Hartford Planning and Zoning Commission one about proposed zoning amendment pertaining to a new transit oriented district. I, I just, are we following that just because we, I mean, we're, I don't know where they are, but I think it's kind of close to the, Newington Junction site, if I had to guess, it's the Elmwood area they're talking about changing. More transient mixed use, which is also where we're speaking of, how um, well, we're not far from that area. Our town line is probably less than a quarter mile. You know, I was following on that, but I think at one point they were talking about more towards where the mall is. I'll ask. I'll I'll, that's the only reason, because it's so close to where one of ours is and we've got a lot of you've just got the so hopefully I don't know where this specific one is this time around i'll call tomorrow and ask i mean you can follow up with me on an email or at the next meeting it's no worries okay very good participation is there anybody within the zoom application please raise your hand if you'd like to participate during public participation if calling into zoom meeting by telephones uh, star nine to raise your hand to be recognized use star six to recognize to speak by telephone and if you could state your name and address for the record is there anybody on the line no one is in the zoom any remarks from commissioners 
I'll entertain a motion for adjourn adjourned. So moved. Motion made. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Renata. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Thank you.